Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field report. Saturday's rain was a welcome sight in most places. Hopefully it'll slow down the field fire so we can get finished. I'm not sure that we've ever had a year with this many big field fires. This rain is a welcome event for all the wheat acres planted that are not germinated yet. Let me get that up and going. Now while the fire risk has gone down, the wind and rain for the last three days has laid some corn down. Scouts will need to be a big part of the conversation of what to do next. What condition is the remaining standing corn in? As many farmers are moving towards the end push of harvest, whether we stop and try to pick up down corn at this point or keep pushing on the remaining standing acres before they come apart is the question the field scouts can help answer. Picking down corn can easily quadruple the time it takes to harvest corn, meaning that we can pick four acres of standing corn at the same time we're trying to pick up an acre of down corn. Now some of these fields that are not sprayed with a fungicide are pretty flat, and they're probably going to need a pickup reel to get them into the combine. Guys have sent in a lot of pictures of fungicide streaking this year, uh, fungicide sprayed by air, similar to what we've seen with heavy tar spot. We see streaking even in fields that were sprayed twice. Once again, as we've learned with the tar spot and southern rust, Keep the spray whiz tight if you're going by air. Combine operators who see these streaks need to make notes because they will show up in the yield map meetings this winter and cause confusion on what's going on. Guys are seeing 20 to 40 bushel swings in these skips. This is especially true if you're doing any plot work replicated in the field. The replication of fungicide streaking on top of a replicated field plot can create a lot of confusion in your yield map meeting without these notes to rely on to help us sort it out. Talking with a grower today and he said he's seeing yield swing from 240 to 165 bushel in these streaks. That can really mess up a hybrid plot. This rain will help with the fall tillage a little but we could sure use some more. So I travel the countryside. I see some of these fields that are tilled that are extremely rough. These will not melt down by spring. When we leave deep peaks and valleys in the spring, the top of the peak dries out and wants to blow away, but the valleys are too wet to till without putting in compaction. If we wait for those deep valleys to dry out so we don't put in compaction, we may be out of water to get the seed to germinate. Some of these fields should be leveled this fall if time allows. Reports coming in from the combine indicate corn yields in many areas continue to creep up with the later planting dates. The end of April corn is getting edged out by the May corn, especially in areas that picked up some water later rains. Talking with a grower today who asked, is it time to forget about April planted corn? This is his third year of May planted corn out doing his April corn. In recent years, weather patterns have allowed him to focus on early planted beans in the fall and try to get them out before they get too dry. Then switch to corn that is in better shape stock-wise to, due to being planted later plus the yield advantage. My advice here in central Illinois, if we have a green light in April, plant some corn. But don't be afraid to wait to May for a green light if you have to. We never know how the rest of the year will play out, so breaking the planting window up is a good way to mitigate risk and take the jam out of the fall of having everything ready at the same time. In one of our plots here at the Corn College campus this fall, we had a hybrid that we planted on 428 and it got caught trying to pollinate in that three and a half days of fog we had this summer. It was only about 50% pollinated when the fog came in and we sat four days without dropping pollen. Once it dried up, we got pollinated, but we had half an ear uh, that was yellow and the top half was white. The top half aborted 
hard as it always does. When doing my yield estimates, I was looking for around 215 to 220 on the corn. The good news was that it was a D hybrid, and I knew from our hand harvest plots that it could produce 57,000 kernels per bushel. When we harvest it, weighed it this week, it made 241. I was pleased with this compared to how ugly the tip back looked. That's a lot of kernel fill. Then we harvested the same hybrid planted May 7th, nine days later. It went 263. <laughs> like you guys, I was no longer happy with my 241 once I found out that May 7th corn was 22 bushel better. Now, was that 22 bushel hit due to April planting date or three and a half days of fog? It was just bad timing for the pollination. But it took field scouting to explain what went on in this plot. Without scouting, we'd give the credit to the planting date. This plot's a good example of why you don't want all your eggs in one basket when it comes to pollination. Fungicide streaks, pollination issues can create some wild swings from field to field or within a plot in the same field that leave you scratching your head this winter without some timely ground truthing from the scouts. Once it's gone through the combine, all the proof is gone. Here locally, I do expect the fog issue to create some variability in hybrid plot performance within the same neighborhood, depending on nothing more than planting dates. Talking about planting dates and planting date differences, in soybeans it's the opposite of corn. We harvested a bean plot here at the campus where we had three planting dates on the same variety. Our May 29th planting was 81 bushel. Now, this was an absolute pleasant surprise. I was expecting the low 70s. That same bean planted on May 13th averaged 84 bushel. So we gained 3 bushel with 16 days earlier planting. That same bean planted on April 14th averaged 101 bushel. We gained 20 bushel by pushing up the planting date 45 days. Now, many of you guys were in these beans in our summer events. My guess is we finished these beans up, these early planted beans finished up when the water supply was a little bit better, along with pre solstice flowering due to the early planting. With this rain, we're really seeing fields with the harvest loss. Some of these fields look like we've got a good cover crop growing. Combine operators stay on top of that harvest lost until the last field is done. Scouts, take out your harvest squares, back out to these fields that are turning green, and check, throw it down and check your harvest lost by counting sprouted plants to see how close you are to your original counts when you're out there. That's a good way to calibrate yourself on harvest loss. It's been a big week in plots. And we have a ways to go yet in corn, but we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Our soil testers are cleaning up these fields behind the combine, so don't forget to let us know when the fields are harvested. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.